that we came up on were uh, two children in the water. And one was face down, the other was on her back, flailing, gasping for air. Strangers jump in to help, pulling two children from the Willamette River, and now their mother, this woman, is under arrest. Good evening, I'm Anna Song. A Portland mother facing murder charges in the death of her four-year-old son. She is also accused of trying to kill her seven-year-old daughter. They were found floating in the Willamette River early this morning. K2's Megan Cockstein joining us live in Southeast Portland tonight. And Megan, the story is just incredibly disturbing. It really is, Anna. And for everyone who was involved in today's rescue efforts, we have learned late tonight from police that the children went from the Selwood Bridge into the Willamette River, though they are not saying how just yet they are telling us that their mother was taken into custody just mere moments before they say she tried to commit suicide for roughly a half hour police detectives say a four-year-old boy and his seven-year-old sister were in the willamette river early saturday morning they say the last person to see them was their mother 31 year old amanda joe stock smith we know that the bridge is the source where those children came from as far as the details of what the manner of which uh, uh, those children came off the bridge, we're not going to provide that information at this time. Four-year-old Eldon J. Rebhan Smith died at the scene. An autopsy shows he drowned. His sister, who police are not naming yet, is still alive. Police were able to identify them through a missing persons report their father filed in Tualatin Friday night. With the information that uh, Tualatin police provided us, and the information from family members that were calling in, we were able to identify um, the two children that were found in the water. About seven hours later, they tracked down Stott Smith. She was sitting in her car in this downtown Portland parking garage. Police say when they approached her, she tried to jump off the top floor. They talked her down, and now she's in jail facing aggravated murder and attempted aggravated murder charges. Investigators still have yet to interview the little girl who somehow managed to survive. Your guess is as good as mine. She's, uh, she's got the will to live. Police say that Scott Smith actually had joint custody of those two children with their father. We were able to do some digging tonight looking into court records. We found that Scott Smith actually filed for divorce back in March. Detectives do say that she does have other children. They are now in protective custody. And police also tell us that Scott Smith does have a prior record with them. Anna. And Megan, uh, what does a woman's family have to say about this? Well, we went out to their house out in Milwaukee tonight. We knocked on the door. A woman came to the door. She didn't even open the door. She said that no one at that house, absolutely no one there, had any comment for me this evening. So we still have yet to hear from them. Okay, Megan, terribly sad. Thank you for your report. It was the sound of children screaming on the river that prompted people nearby to jump in and help. KT's Margie Lynch spoke to the man who actually pulled this brother and sister from the Willamette and a woman who watched this terrible scene unfold. It was pitch black on the Willamette River, and witnesses reported hearing a child's screams. But Dave Hegg says the sound he heard from his McAdam Bay houseboat was much more desperate. It wasn't a sc screaming, it was more of a moan. It was like uh, somebody that was exhausted and... Yeah, just, you know, with, between gulps of water. Rescuers back on the scene in the daylight at Staff Jennings Marina, trying to get a better look. Dave says it wasn't far from here. He and his wife found the source of those moans. They weren't prepared for what they saw. What we came up on were uh, two children in the water. And one was face down, the other was on her back flailing, gasping for air. Hag believes the kids drifted down the river at least a quarter mile before he picked them up. Once in the boat, he says the seven-year-old girl had nothing left. She couldn't uh, really speak at that point. Fairly coherent and the, uh, the smaller child was lifeless. And I couldn't do anything. You know, Pam Gorder know. says rescuers met the hags across the river here at her dock and tried to resuscitate the boy. Little boy definitely had a smack on the side of his head. She was in her houseboat and still can't shake the image from her mind. All I felt was the mother part. Like, why isn't someone crying over this baby? Why aren't they taking care of her? Why, why aren't they covering him? The seven-year-old survived, but the little boy did not. Pam says after watching the rescuers try to save those children on her dock, the search continued with the boats and helicopters concentrating their efforts right around the Selwood Bridge.
and it's where they return looking for more clues. Witnesses are also trying to understand how this happened. Not something you'd like to think about. I'm, I'm glad that the, the little girl's going to be okay. Margie Lynch, K2 News. Portland police detectives are looking for more clues and they need your help. Police did seize Amanda Stott Smith's car, a dark blue four-door Audi. And they'd like to hear from anyone who saw that car near or on the Selwood Bridge this morning around 1.15 a.m. They're also hoping to talk with anyone who finds something they consider in or unusual in or along the shores of the Willamette River. If you have any information, call Portland police. Stay with K2 News for continuing coverage of this mother accused of murder. In between newscasts, you can find the very latest on our website at KATU.com.